Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you the main or most popular mid-game grinding spots in Black Desert Online. I will give you some tips and tricks and all the information I can about them. I will explain some things quickly before I start. All the data about the gold or items per hour grinding is gathered through my grinding sessions, the data reported by other players in forums, YouTube, Reddit, Black Desert Online Hub or in the game and by my friends. This data is always showing the average approximate money and items per hour with a 50% loot scroll, without Aries Fever, in a normal server, without any loot or drop event active, the name of the mobs in white green color, at least a dead Kutum and a 3 dead black star main weapon and with characters in level 62 or higher. Your performance comparing to all of this data depends on your class, your skill with your class, your skill practice with the rotation in each place, your skill build and the gear including the crystals. Before I start, I just want to ask you quickly to click on the subscribe button to stay tuned for new upcoming videos about Black Desert Online and give me a hand to grow my channel. And now, without any more talk, let's dive in it! The first place we're gonna visit is the Surth Guard. Located in the north of Medea is one of the best places for one player for a skill and combat experience between level 61 and 63. This is my favorite rotation. Here it's easy to level up your pixie while you're grinding, thanks to the gear they drop. You don't need to have much AP DP to come here, even with less than the recommended AP in the game, 240, you will kill them almost with one blow. The mobs are pretty easy to kill, they spawn fast, and there is tons of them as you can see. You can find some elites around, but it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> In our second trip, we heading right to the desert, to the Akman Temple. To enter in Akman, you need to find a portal in the desert. Those portals can bring you to Akman or Histria with a 50% of chance for each place. You can spot these portals from really far away. There is a quest line to unlock a permanent entrance to Akman but you will need to give 3 Black Spirit Claws in exchange, worth 72 million, so I won't even mention it. Once you are inside, you have many rooms to choose with different sizes depending on your grinding speed, with super easy intuitive rotations, and one NPC with a shop and repairing services. Depending on your DP and to grind faster, would be better for you if you keep an eye on some hidden traps around. They will stun you appearing from the ground. They look like Kutum, the world boss. You can know where they are because you cannot pass through the spot and your crosshair will become red. Just move away and use a frontal guard skill in the moment you step on them and kill them right away before they go underground again. There is some monster that can push you back with the attacks and the guy with the big hammer can knock you down.
Our next stop is the ruins of Histria. To access to this place, we just need to follow the same steps that I have explained before to access Akman. Histria is a place with a big difference of grinding performance between the classes. At the main entrance, or exit, you can find an NPC with repairing and soft services, but like Akman, you will appear in a random location after enter the portal. The place is huge. You will see some people grinding running around the corridors, or if you follow me, I will show you some rooms with pretty easy rotations. Depending on your AP, you can grind in one room or go for a double room rotation. Just here we have three rooms connected, one stick to the other. In history you can stun the mobs, but you can't knock them down. Keep an eye especially in the big ones, because they will shoot at you with a ranged attack dealing a lot of damage and knocking you back, so try to stay close and they will swap to a close combat mode and pull the other mobs to it. Kill the watchtower in the same way and try to use back attacks to deal more damage and dodge the enemy attacks. Most of the monsters will knock you back with the attacks here. From the history of ruins and the desert, we move into the other side of the continent, into the deep forest of Camasilvia, to visit the man sounds. Here we can get, while we grinding, some interesting drops, what makes this place worth to try. A Spectre's Energy, Forest Fury, and one of the ingredients for the infinite mana potion. I will show you some rotations for this place. The first one, coming down from the node manager, is a short, simple rotation, starting from these mobs, going forward, turning to the right, and coming back to the starting point. If we go this way, we will find a bigger and little more complicated rotation. We will start cleaning from the left, in this kind of housing zone.
After each clean, we will move to the big pool on the right, passing through the fences. Going straight ahead and turning to the right to go back to the beginning. Next to the Manson Forest, we can find the Merrimack Ruins, the best and most popular place for grinding experience. Here, in the west side of the ruins, you can find spots for one player. I will show you the trick to grind a Mermac Ruins. First, using your minimap, look for elite mobs. Don't attack and approach to it until it moves and start to summon smaller mobs. You will notice this by the red areas appearing on the ground. Dodge them or they will deal to you a big amount of damage. The faster you kill the small mobs, the faster the elite will summon more and try to kill in the same time the bigger ones, especially the super big one, because we'll stun you all the time. Try to don't kill the elite, at some point we'll stop summoning monsters, and after some seconds we'll die, so you can move to other one. Here you can see the best rotations for a party, the main rotation for 3 or 5 people and the 12 trees for 4 or 5 people. It's quite important to have a group with a similar AP, one bracket of difference maximum, or the performance will be affected, everybody will need to wait for the people with less AP. Our next stop, Kratuga Ruins. To enter, you will need to go inside the Hasra Ruins cavern and find the door I will show you. Then, you will need a Black Spirit Claw or Unsealed Ruins Slate crafted with three Ruins Slates that you can get inside Kratuga. You can as well ask in the world chat for somebody with these items to invite you to a party if they are thinking of going inside.
Once you are inside, you will find many rooms. But the deeper you go, the bigger and better usually they are. There is no shop repairing services in Krotuga, so you will need a tent and mates for long grinding sessions. You need to stay about 3 hours more or less to get the items to enter again for free. It's easy to find a free spot in the PvP RC server in Kratuga, and you can choose between a single or a double room rotation depending on your AP. In a normal server, I don't think it's really worth to come here, because the rare drops become too hard to get and the gold per hour is not very good. But in exchange, in the Arsa server, becomes one of the best spots for money per hour. But the monsters, they deal a good amount of damage, especially the small worms shooting at you if you don't kill them fast. The bigger one can knock you down, and the medium ones with two arms like swords can stun you continuously with the charged electric attack they do, so try to avoid it. Now we will visit the Thorwood Forest. This is the best place to get the Spectre's energy item, because here the drop chance is higher, as it's one of the best places to use your Aegis Fever, because you have spent a really small amount of points to loot a monster. You will find a lot of people grinding every server in Thorwood, and the place has only 3 spots to do it. So get ready to fight for the spot! And now, about the monsters, they move really fast. First, this tower will use an AoE attack if we approach to it. The mages can become a problem if we let them shoot in us from the back lines. The bears are not really friendly neither, but they are slow, just take care if they start to roll to don't be in their way, and when they land after the roll, they do a ground smash AoE attack that deals a lot of damage. The assassins are invisible. When they appear, as you see, they will stun you. The gargoyles, they are immune while they are screaming at the start. When they are weak, kill them fast before they can start or finish one attack that they become red like charging energy and will stand you for several seconds. Then, this tower will shoot at you powerful energy shards. And this one will start to store energy when you approach, to explode and knock you down if you are close enough. And then, the giant wolf. He will stand up and smash the ground. If you are close, he will stun you, even if you are in its back. He can jump forward and stun you again. Now I will show you quickly the three spots to grind at Thorwood Forest.
Get ready your ship, because our next stop is the underworld ruins of Sikraya. Probably the best place to grind for money in this video. To start, I will show you quickly how to enter in Sikraya. First of all, you need to start this quest in suggested quest that will bring you to this NPC at the docks of Portifirio. Once you reach the quest named The Forgotten City, you will get as reward the item to enter inside Sikraya one time. After get that, we will sail heading to the north of Iliaya Il Il Island? If you look at the minimap, you have the exact point to dive to reach the upper ruins entrance. You will need some items to be able to dive deep enough to reach it. Elixirs of Seal, a piece of armor with breathing time crystals and the skill of your pixie that gives you breathing time could be some of the easier ways to help you accomplish that. The main item to enter can be dropped by the mobs inside Sikraya, or you can buy it in the marketplace. This is the entrance to Sikraya Avisal Zone, where we will use the item. Inside the ruins, you can find many rooms with intuitive rotations. Kill fast this tower because they will debuff you with movement and attack speed reduction debuffs. The big crab monster can knock you down and the big prone will start to spin dealing a good amount of damage if you are close. You have another two towers to deal with. One will recover the monster's haste speed, the other one will shoot at you from a really long distance. And to finish this video, we will go to the most popular spot in the game, Star's End. Get ready for Rumble, because you will need to fight for your spot many times. Oh, 
as you can see, you can pull the mobs to these stones and destroy them to knock down or kill all of them instantly. The bigger monster can hit the ground with the weapon and release one spell that will chase you underground to hit you at some point and knock you down. He can do it from long distance. Now I will have a quick walk around to show you the spots. And that was all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave me a comment with any questions or suggestions please, and subscribe to my channel to give me a hand to become famous and buy a microphone. Thanks a lot for watching, see you next time!